In this first chapter, we're going to be creating a snowman. So when you open up 3D Studio Max, you get something um, that looks like this, hopefully, depending on what version of Max you have. But it's, it's always going to be pretty close to this. So you'll notice that the largest portion of our UI is taken up by these four windows here. And these windows are called viewports. They are our uh, cameras to see this uh, virtual 3D space or scene that we're actually working on here. So you can see they have different angles. This one is front and top and left and perspective. But before we even begin creating our snowman, we're going to need to learn how to navigate our cameras around in these viewports. To demonstrate that for you, I'm going to use the perspective view because it's the most interesting view. Now I'm going to make, I'm going to maximize this viewport, which means I'm just going to make it big. And to do that, I'm going to make it the active viewport by simply middle clicking on it. You'll notice the active viewport is indicated by this uh, yellow bounding box. You can actually left click on it too, but I like to use middle click always because that way I know I'm not going to mess up anything in our scene because our left click is actually going to uh, move stuff as move stuff as well. So we can ensure that we're not going to move stuff around by using the middle click. And once it's active, I'm just going to go all the way to the bottom right corner of our user interface here and click on this maximize viewport toggle, which is just going to make it big. So to pan our camera around, we're going to click and hold the middle mouse button or the little scrolly thing. To rotate our camera, we're going to hold alt and then click and hold the middle mouse button and it's going to perform this. It's called an arc rotate. That's its technical term in 3D. And then to zoom in and out, or dolly more accurately, we're going to scroll our middle mouse button. So again, that's middle mouse click to pan, alt and middle mouse to arc rotate, and scroll for zoom. So now that we know how to navigate our camera around our scene, we're ready to start making our snowman. Now, 90% of the time, when we start creating 3D, we're going to start from what is called a primitive. And to create a primitive, we have over here on our right um, column here, we need to make sure that we're in the Create tab, which is this little sun, I suppose it is. And when you're in the Create tab, you'll notice that all of these geometric shapes come up. Um, if they're not coming up, then be sure you have this drop-down menu set to standard primitives because we can create all different kinds of things. But we want to create a standard primitive. So to create a primitive in 3D uh, or in 3DS Max, we click on the primitive we want to create, and that will put us in, in this case, we're in box creation mode, which is indicated by box being popped in blue like that. And now whenever we click on our scene, you'll see that um, it drags out a box. So we click and drag and that will create the footprint of our box. When we let go of click, we'll define the height of our box and a uh, second click will finalize our box. So again, that's click and drag to create the footprint, let go of click to create the height, and then we click to finalize it. So it's kind of a two-part process. So I'm just going to clear our scene. And you'll notice that if we try to do anything else when we have box popped in blue like this, we say, oh, I want to select this box. Well, if we didn't do anything. We're actually just creating another box. So this blue is telling us that we're in box creation mode. So to get out of box creation mode, or really any mode for that matter in, for, uh, in Max, we press Q. And Q is always going to bring us back to select mode. So I'm just going to clear our scene. And now since we're creating a snowman, a natural starting place for a snow snowman uh, is probably going to be a sphere. So I'm just going to click and drag to create a sphere. Now spheres are not like boxes. Um, one click and drag is all that we need because there is no height since they are uh, symmetrical from all angles. Now I'm going to get out of sphere creation mode again by pressing Q. And I'm going to maximize my scene here. Now Q might seem like an awfully strange key to get us to our default selection tool, but it will all make sense once we see our other three transformation types. So I'm going to create a box because it'll be a little bit easier for you guys to see. We have three basic transformations. We have translate, rotate, and scale. Now, 
the hotkey for translate is W, which is not coincidentally right next to Q. And to translate something, we simply click on the axis we wish to translate it on or move it. Some people also call it the move tool, but I think its technical term is translate. And we can also move it along two axes at once by clicking on these little box here. Now, what axis we're about to move it on is indicated by the yellow pre-visualization. And we have rotate, which is not coincidentally the E key right next to the W key. And the rotate tool works similarly in that we click and drag on the axis that we want to rotate on. And the scale tool, which is R, which we can scale in one specific direction. Uniformly, if we click right in the middle of the tool, we'll see the entire uh, gizmo, which is what this little thing is called. Or we can scale on two axes at once by clicking on this bar that connects two axes. So you can see that all three of our basic transformations are all right next to each other on the keyboard. And that is done so that we can have our hand um, man constantly manning QWER and always have easy access to these tools because these are the tools we are going to be using most commonly when we are making things in 3D. That is the, the move tool, the rotate tool, and the scale tool. We're going to be using those all the time. Also, I should probably note that deleting objects in Max is done with the delete key under the insert key, not the backspace key or any other key. So, continuing with our snowman, we want another sphere on top of this sphere. So I'm just simply going to drag one out. And then we can use our move tool to kind of move it into the right place. And you'll notice this can be pretty tricky and it does take some getting used to and you really have to look at it from every angle to get it right on there. But something that can help you guys out a lot um, are these orthographic views. And I didn't mention this before, but um, these views are different from the perspective view in that they don't have perspective. So if we look at a plane in the perspective view, of course, this plane, you can see the, the lines are converging. They're, they have a vanishing point. If we look at that same plane in orthographic and rotate our camera around, which you should never do, really, because I can't think of any reason why you'd want an orthographic view uh, three quarters like this, uh, we can see that the lines are perfectly parallel with each other. So I'm just going to pop this back to my front view. To do that, you press um, F for front, T is for top, and R is for right, and P is for perspective by default in Max. So we could drag another sphere and put it on top of this, but there's actually a, a easier way to do this. And that is just to duplicate the sphere right below it. To do that, we simply hold shift and drag instead of just dragging. And that will actually work for any transformation. Um, I'll demonstrate with the box because it's hard to see with the sphere. You see, we can simply hold shift before we start dragging and it will drag off a copy. Or we can even rotate off a copy if we please. can even resize ourselves off a copy. And you'll notice that it looks like it's just resizing, but the other box is actually inside of this box. So you guys can see that placing this third sphere on top of this second sphere was a lot easier when we simply dragged up the second sphere to create the third one. And that'll be the case in a lot of situations. So it's a good thing to keep in mind that sometimes it'll just be easier to duplicate what you already have than create an entirely new one in regards to placement. So now let's create a nose for this snowman. We're going to create a carrot nose, so a natural shape to represent a carrot might be a cone. Now, something to note is that the view, the particular viewport that you create your primitive in will determine the orientation of the primitive. So if I create it in perspective view, you'll notice that my cone goes uh, sprouts straight up from the ground plane. However, if I create this cone in front view, then it'll come in growing sideways. So keep in mind that your primitive will always sprout from the plane perpendicular that you place it on. You guys will get the feel for it if you just start placing stuff. So 
with knowing that uh, the front view is probably going to be our best bet to create this cone. Otherwise, we're going to have to rotate it and move it about to get it right in place. But if we create it in the front view and just click right in the middle of his face here, and we can watch our left view, the bottom left viewport there, to see how long we want it. And this particular primitive requires an additional click, one more click than the box to determine its dimensions, because you can also make like a weird kind of tapered cylinder thing with it. So now I'm just using the Y handle with the move tool to just kind of move this cone out towards his face. And I could just press R to switch to the scale tool to scale it in a little bit. You can always scale something after you've already placed it. And now our snowman has a nose. All he needs now, I'd say, are eyes and a top hat. So let's start with the top hat. I'm gonna maximize my perspective view. And to make a top hat, I'm gonna use a cylinder. So I'll just kind of drag out the brim here. And then I'll use that duplicating trick to make the, not sure what part of the hat that's called, the part ab above the brim, the hat part. <laughs> and I can just scale in a duplicate. Now we don't really see anything happening other than our white bounding box shrinking. And that indicates to us that there's a cylinder inside of this cylinder. We can simply scale it up on the Z to give it some more depth. And then if we're not happy with its dimensions, we can continue to refine them. So here's the snowman's top hat. Now we could drag both pieces up on top of his head, but there's an easier way to do this. And that's to move them both at the same time by selecting both of them. So to select both of these guys, we can simply drag a marquee and cross over both of them, and that'll select both of them. Or we can select one and then hold down control and select the other. So in Max, control will always select in addition to. Alt will do the opposite. So if we have a selection, we can hold Alt and click on an item, and that will actually deselect it. And if we want to clear our entire selection, we can just click in a blank place that has no objects and that will clear our selection. Also, we can press Control D to do that, which is deselect. We can also press Control A, which will select everything in the scene, or at least everything available to us in the scene. You can also combine Control or Alt with marquee drag to select a bunch of additional objects or subtract a bunch of objects from your selection at once. So now that we know how to multiple select, we can just select both pieces here and press W and move both of these cylinders up in one pass and place this hat atop his head. We can use the orthographic view to ensure that we are indeed placing this hat in the right spot. See now, if we look at the perspective view, it looks like the hat might be right, but the left view and the front view reveal that the hat is really sitting on the very top of his head there, which is pretty unnatural. And since this is clearly the most realistic snowman ever, uh, we're going to want to move that down onto his head a little. I'm just going to give it a little tip here to add some character. Now let's give this snowman button eyes and button buttons, <laughs> I suppose. So the creation of these buttons is going to be simple. It's going to be a cylinder. But the placement of these buttons will probably be the hardest thing we've had to place yet. It's really going to take a lot of finessing to get these buttons right on the sphere, but if you guys can do it, it'll be a really good exercise in um, learning how these gizmos work and getting a feel for um, controlling the object exactly the way you want to. So you can use the side viewports if you wish. That helps a lot of people. So. We can just kind of move it into place here. First thing we have to do is rotate it. Now I've pressed W to get myself into the move mode. And I'm gonna look at the front view so that I can scale it about to the proportion I want. Move it to roughly the place I think the button eye ought to be. 
Then I can rotate it back to kind of conform to the contour of the sphere here and rotate it sideways a little bit to conform to the contour uh, going the other way. And just move it back. Move it back until it kind of clips through the cylinder. I mean, excuse me, clips through the sphere. And uh, then just move it forward until it's kind of sitting on there. And it looks a little big here, so I can just scale it down. And there we have it. Now we're going to have to do the same thing for the other side. And oftentimes I use the perspective view. And once you guys get really comfortable rotating the camera around, uh, it does get pretty easy to use the perspective view for this kind of thing. I mean, you could just move it roughly to where you want it and just pretty much do the same thing you do with the orthographic viewports with the perspective view in that you look at it from one angle. And then once it looks decent from one angle, you kind of look at it from a different angle until it all fits and just constantly rotate around your uh, the thing you're making to check if it looks right from every angle because again it could look perfectly fine from one angle and totally wonky from another angle so just keep that in mind but it will take practice to get to a point where uh, you're comfortable enough with rotating the camera and changing between all the transforms uh, to do this quickly and effectively now let's go for these buttons for his shirt just dragging off a duplicate with the shift key. And really, I mean, that's not the, the shift drag thing isn't necessarily a super um, rudimentary thing, but it ends up being something I use so much I chose to show it right at the beginning because I use it all the time. And I will just kind of fit these buttons onto his chest here. If snowmans have chests, then I suppose this would be where we'd find it. And there we have it. Now the colors of our snowman are a bit wonky. So we can change those by simply selecting objects, whatever objects we want. And if we go over here to the modify tab, this little like blue rainbow, um, we have a color picker up here. We just click on the color. You see it's kind of a pale green there. And we can simply click on the color we want it to be and our selection will change to that color. Now we also have a color picker in the create tab as well, which they, they are the same thing. They're just in two different places. So I'm just going to go ahead and select all my snowballs and make them white. And I'll select all my buttons. I'm just holding control to select in addition and make them black. Select my nose and make it yellow or red, orange. I forget what color carrot is. Orange, that looks right to me. And my top hat shall be eh, black, I suppose. So there we have it. Our snowman is complete. We learned a bit about the Max interface, navigating our camera around in the viewport, creating primitives, we learned about our basic transformations, move, rotate, and scale. We also learned how to duplicate objects and how to add or subtract from our selections with Control and Alt. If you're wondering how to make this pretty render with soft lighting and a white background, don't worry, we'll get to that in the chapters to come. In this next chapter, we'll learn about sub-object mode and get to the real meat of modeling in Max. However, it's important that you have a good grasp of everything we did in this chapter before proceeding, so if you missed some stuff, I recommend you re-watch those parts. Now let's model a frying pan.